Hey, good morning, Jason. Can you hear me? I got you. Hey, good morning. Sorry, this is Andy at Western Marketing. We had some technical difficulties this morning. Um, Nick couldn't get the webinar to work, so um, I'll be hosting the webinar today along with Jason Goodrich from Equitrust. Um, again, apologize for that little delay there, but uh, Jason, if you want to go ahead and begin, I'll turn everything over to you. Sounds good, Andy. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Andy said, my name is Jason Goodrich with Equitrust Life Insurance Company. Uh, first off, just let me thank everyone for taking time today to join this webinar, which will focus on the four fixed index annuities with Equitrust Life and how best to position those annuities with your clients. Obviously, we're still in some unprecedented times here with a lot of unknowns, so I really do appreciate you joining me today. Uh, what I plan to do for this webinar is first talk about some of the changes we've made to make to uh, making doing business easier in this more virtual environment. Then I also want to talk uh, a little in depth about the two new indices we launched last spring and show you the advantages of them, not only in this environment, but in any environment moving forward. Uh, I believe we have some great index annuities, but the addition of these strategies has really helped in the long-term accumulation of our products. I uh, also walk through the products at a pretty high level, pointing out some niches uh, we have with each one, especially in the current environment. And I'll try to keep this at, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. Uh, I will have some time at the end if there's any questions. And uh, just lastly, let me thank Andy, Nick, all the great folks over at Western Marketing. Uh, they've been a great organization with, with Equitrust since the very beginning of Equitrust, one of the first groups ever appointed with us. So appreciate their partnership and relationship. With that, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, I mentioned uh, <clears throat> we made some changes to help do you know, back last spring that would help, you know, in doing business with Equitrust a little easier in the virtual environment. One of those is we made a change in, in that we no longer require you to meet face-to-face -face with the client. <clears throat> so you're able to, to meet over video, over the phone, uh, kind of depending on your previous relationship with the client. We just have a disclosure form you need to fill out. So I just wanted to point that out, that there is no more requirement for the face-to-face -face meetings with Equitrust on annuities or life insurance. Also, along with the virtual thing, it's important, I think, to have the e-application process, too, especially if you're not meeting face-to-face, -face, where you can walk through uh, and do the e-application. So we have a link right on the Equitrust website uh, for Firelight, where you can uh, submit applications electronically. Okay, <clears throat> like I said, today I'm going to focus on the four index annuities with Equitrust. And really, when you look at the four index annuities, I think we have three primary niches, uh, kind of three areas where we really shine in the industry. First would be premium bonus. Uh, we have two products I'll talk about today. Both offer upfront premium bonuses. One of them is the market power bonus, which is the first index annuity we ever launched. It has a 10% premium bonus. Then the other one is the market 10 bonus, bonus with a 6% premium bonus. That'd be the first big niche we have. <clears throat> the second one would be accumulation. And that's where we're seeing a lot of business right now, uh, especially over the last couple of months into the accumulation products. We have a couple of very clean, simple, easy products. Uh, that are really just built for the maximum accumulation potential. And the third niche we have that's <clears throat> kind of different than what most carriers have is we have a guaranteed return of premium uh, product, which is the market 10 bonus again. So we'll talk a little more about that, but it's going to allow the client, a client that's, you know, maybe nervous about that they're going to need to access the money at some point. This product allows them to access it at any time without uh, and get their full premium back. So kind of three niches, premium bonuses, accumulation, and return to premium. Okay, before we get into the product, so I mentioned I want to talk about the two new indices we have. So I'll touch on those right now. Um, the first is the Barclays Focus 50, is what it's called. It is ex exclusive to Equitrust. So it's only on the Equitrust products. It is on all four Equitrust uh, index annuities. And we'll talk about the rates here in a little bit. But as far as a vol control index, I think it's one of the easier ones to understand and explain to your clients out there. There's really only kind of three different uh, components that make up uh, the indice. Number one is the 50 lowest volatility U.S. stocks. Okay, so this is just these are going to be your what I call your big boring companies, which I think a lot of clients like now. You know, they trust the big boring companies more than the sexier companies like Tesla and things like that. So some companies that typically fall within the 50 lowest vol would be Coca-Cola, uh, Dollar General Store, Costco, Campbell Soup, 
Johnson and Johnson, Merck, Waste Management. <clears throat> so companies like that that have been around for a long time, uh, all your clients know the names of these companies. Those are the ones that typically fall within the 50 lowest fall stocks. That's one component. The other component is going to be four different lengths of treasuries, uh, two, five, 10, and 30 year. And then the third is cash, uh, which is going to help control the volatility. Okay, so really the goal is to get the best growth potential while maintaining 5% uh, volatility or less. Okay, and that is, like I said, on all four index annuities. And there's a lot more detail on it we can get into later if you'd like to. There's a website out there about it. There's a video. We have lots of information on the Berkeley's. The other one we added back in March is, or excuse me, in April is the uh, S&P Mark V. Uh, this one you may have heard of. There are some other carriers that have this industry on their products. It's performed very well uh, since it came out a couple of years ago. Um, it is not exclusive to Equitrust. Okay, so like I said, it's on some other carriers, and it's uh, on two of our index annuities, our two accumulation products, the market value and the market seven. Once again, it's, I think it's very uh, uh, easy and simple to understand. Let me pull up my laser you can see here. So really, it's made up of, of these four different components and ones that many of your clients have heard of. The first component is equities, and it uses the S&P 500, very familiar to people. The second is commodities, and for the commodity, it uses gold. The reason it does that is gold is a, is a really great hedge against inflation. Okay, so that's why it works so well with this, with this industry. Third is fixed income. We're just using the 10-year treasury, okay, and then cash to control, once again, to control the volatility. So once again, very clean, very simple. There's also a website dedicated to this indice uh, with a video and all the history and things like that too. So those are two new indices we've added. I think it really helped the long-term accumulation of the index annuities with Equitrust. <clears throat> Obviously, there's been a lot of uh, you know, market volatility since the coronavirus. And I think these indices have become even more popular with all the volatility in the markets. Let me just kind of walk through an example here. So this is going back to the beginning of the coronavirus, so it's like February 13th. You can see the purplish line here is the S&P 500. So you can see, I mean, it's smoothed out a lot now, but you can see through most of the summer stuff, a lot of ups and downs. What's nice about these other two indices, the Barclays and the Mark Fives, you can see how they've a little bit ups and downs, but mostly stayed pretty flat, pretty smooth through the through the entire uh, coronavirus up, you know, up until the day. So. I think it's been a great option during the kind of the unknown markets and unknown times we find ourselves in. Okay, here's just some raw numbers comparing the S&P 500 to the Barclays Focus 50 to the Mark 5. Okay, so here you see the S&P 500 going back to 2004, just kind of the raw returns each year. Okay, and then the Barclays, same thing, Mark 5, same thing. A couple things I'll point out down here is the annualized. All right, so this is the annualized return going back to 2004. You can see the S&P is at 6.89, the Barclays is at 5.79, and the Mark V is at 5.17. At first thought, you might think, well, that looks pretty good. The S&P has done better than the other two. But keep in mind, these are raw returns, so we're not taking into account any uh, caps or participation rates. Okay, so this is just like I said, the raw return. As you know, on the S&P 500, there's gonna be a cap on an index annuity and there's gonna be a participation late rate probably you know, in the 20s or 30s. So when you add that to it, you'd see that the Barclays and Mark V actually performed better than the S&P 500 on an annualized basis. And here's just year to date. Uh, you can see the S&P is up 275 year to date. The Barclays up a little less, 1.96. Uh, but still not bad considering the environment. And the Mark V is actually up over 7% year to date, right? So it has really performed very well. Okay, and then here's what the current participation rates are for these indices on the different products. I'll come back to this and we'll talk about this later, but I really wanted to show you just kind of the illustrated rate. <clears throat> so see it shows the best 10, worst 10, last 10, uh, using the current participation rates for each of the products. But the last 10 here, is what you'll see if you run an illustration with Equitrust. So you can see that for the illustrated rate for the Barclays and the Mark V, it's gonna range anywhere from 358 on the low end to 8.85 on the top end uh, for illustrated rates. So once again, in today's environment, low interest rate environment we find ourselves in, I think it makes a lot of sense to, to diversify with these indices. Okay, let's get into the four products and just touch pretty briefly on them. Uh, first one, 
the kind of the flagship Equitrust product. It's called the Market Power Bonus. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's been with Equitrust since the very beginning. It's the first index annuity we rolled out, I think it's about 16 years ago now. Okay, it's been our number one product every year, but one year since we rolled it out. Very simple product, single premium. Uh, it's either 14 years or 10 years, depending on your state. I'll show you a map in a second so you can see which, you know, if yours is a 14 year or 10 year in your state. It's a 10% premium bonus. And with Equitrust premium bonuses, they're always up front. Right? There's no vesting schedule, so you get it immediately. And, and I think there's a big benefit right now to using a product with a premium bonus. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. And issue ages are zero to 75, unless they have the income rider. I should mention for, the, for this webinar we're doing today, and, and due to time constraints, I'm only going to focus on the non-income rider versions of our products. Uh, call Western Marketing, call me if you have questions about the income rider, but you know, for just to keep it in decent time frame, we're going to focus on non-income writer. Okay, so where does the market power fit? Well, it's going to be really strong for early accumulation. Uh, you know, ways also ways to set off a loss in the market, or if they need to get an immediate bump or something like that. And I'm going to kind of skip over this, and we're going to come back and talk about this in a second. Here's the map I wanted to show you. So, uh, depending on your state, it's either it's either 14 years or 10 years. Okay, and you can see like these dark green states, I guess, those are where it's 14 years, these lighter green states like Texas, that is where the product's 10 years. But in all these states that it's approved, it's still a 10% upfront premium bonus. There's only three states where we don't have a product, California, Delaware, and New York, it's in every other state. Okay, here's the caps and rates. See lots of different strategies. I'll just focus here on like the, the Barclays Focus 50. You can see it has a 45% participation rate on the one year, 65 on the two year. Just to put some illustrated rates to this, the one year illustrates at 3.58% per year, which doesn't sound that big, but keep in mind they're getting a 10% upfront bonus too. So when you annualize that out, it works out pretty well. And then the two years, a 4.91 annualized illustrated rate. Okay, um, premium bonuses. I mentioned a couple times that we're very competitive with premium bonus products. And I do think there's a little bit of a, a myth in our industry that a premium bonus is bad for the client. The reason being is with a premium bonus product, as you just saw, they typically get a little lower caps and participation rates than if they used a non-premium bonus product. And for a lot of clients, I agree that it does make a lot of sense to use a non-premium bonus product. But I think there are some, some uh, specific situations where it does make a lot of sense for the client to get an upfront premium bonus on the product, even though it may limit their long-term accumulation. That's what I want to talk about briefly here for, before we get into the other three products. Uh, this is just kind of a hypothetical example first. And what we're using here is, uh, excuse me for a second. This is an example showing a fixed index annuity with a 10% premium bonus versus a fixed index annuity with no bonus, but a 5% cap, right? So no bonus, 5% cap, bonus 3% cap. We're looking at the best 10 year period over the last 20 years, right? So this is the best period during the last 20 years of the S&P 500. So what you see here is the 10% bonus product obviously starts out higher because of the bonus and grows at a nice rate. The other one without the bonus starts at a lower amount, obviously, but grows at a higher rate. But even with that, even in the best environment, it still takes them seven years to catch up. Right, so if your client's gonna be taking money anywhere in here, anywhere in these first seven years, they're gonna be accessing this for one reason or another, I think it makes a lot of sense to, to do a premium bonus product. Okay, same example here, same uh, caps, but we're gonna use the worst 10-year period, okay? You can see in the worst 10-year period in the market hasn't performed, it's taken a lot longer for that non-bonus product to catch up. In fact, it takes 14 years, which is the length of, of our, our longest term index annuity. So, you know, depending on your feelings about, you know, long-term market performance, I think it could, once again, make sense to use a premium bonus product. So breaking that down, when does it make sense? Number one, if the client has a short time horizon before accessing penalty-free funds. Some examples of that would be wealth transfer. Uh, maybe they don't want to purchase life insurance. Maybe they can't purchase life insurance, so they're going to use an annuity as a way to, to leave money to their heirs. Uh, well, if that's the case, then the market power bonus 
or any bonus product makes a lot of sense to give them to immediately increase that value that they can pass on through wealth transfer. Second one would be annuitization. Uh, a lot of folks do laddering strategies where they're going to annuitize contracts. Well, if you're going to, and most Equitrust products allow you to annuitize after the fifth year. So if you're going to annuitize after the fifth year, I think it makes sense to do a premium bonus to increase that value as much as you can before you annuitize it. And third is income riders, which we're not going to talk about today, but obviously helps with an income rider payout to get a, a premium bonus on the value. Next one is 10% free withdrawals, maybe higher in the early years. So this could work as a great bridge to social security. So I know a lot of folks that, you know, maybe they don't want to start, they want to wait to draw their social security, but until they do, they need to supplement their income. So they're going to take out 10% free withdrawals from their annuity. Well, if they're going to do that, uh, and with a bonus product, the, because of the bonus, the accumulation value is going to be higher. Because the accumulation value is going to be higher, uh, the 10% free withdrawal is going to be higher. So if they're just going to use it as a bridge to Social Security, I think it makes sense to use a bonus product. Recover from an underperforming product. Uh, you know, maybe they were in a product that just hasn't performed as it was illustrated, or maybe it's lost money, uh, or maybe they're in a product where the renewal rates are down to the minimum. This could be a way to get your client into a better product that better fits their needs and at the same time make up for some of those losses or non-gains. Low index performance. Uh, you know, it really doesn't matter how well the market or how high your caps are if the market doesn't perform. So if you have a 10% cap or a 2% cap and the market returns 1%, the client still gets 1%. It doesn't matter what their cap is. So depending on how you feel about, you know, market performance over the upcoming years, it could make sense to use a bonus product. And lastly, I think a situation we find ourselves in today is kind of a low interest rate environment. If we're in a low interest rate environment and caps across the board are just lower, uh, what it does is it really limits the long-term growth potential for your clients, right? If they, only, if they can only get a 4% cap or a 5% cap for non-bonus product, they're still really limited. Uh, so to me, it makes sense in those situations to maybe front load the contract a little more, give them a little more upfront because the long-term is limited. So those are just a few ideas on, on when I think a bonus makes sense. Like I said, it, you know, each situation is unique and depends on, you know, the client's specific needs. Okay, that was the first product. Our second bonus product is the Market 10 bonus. And I'll focus on, a, highlight a couple features here. Uh, first off, it's a 6% premium bonus on any premium in the first five years. Okay, this product is, uh, is one we see a lot of for flexible premium. So any premium down in the first five years will get the 6% bonus, but there is no rolling surrender charge. So if they had money in the fifth year, Client still gets the bonus, but it only has five years surrender charge on it. The other big issue with this one is the return of premium rider. Okay, and that's just what it says it is. They are guaranteed to get all their money back at any time if they surrender it. Okay, and there is no fee for this. It's one of the very few products in the industry that has an immediate return of premium and no fee. Those are the two key features on the product. When is it appropriate? Obviously, peace of mind with return of premium. You know, maybe an index annuity makes a lot of sense for your client and everything's great, but for one reason or another, they can't get past uh, the surrender charge. You know, the concern with the surrender charge, even though they have an emergency fund, they probably will never gonna, are not going to need to access it for a while. This is a good product to pivot to because it allows them, give them that peace of mind that they can't always get the money back. And, you know, and typically what happens is they never access the return of premium, but it gives them the peace of mind to know it's there. Another positioning of it, I think, is a way to consolidate, you know, financial resources over several years. Uh, as you know, if a client has a CD, many times they have multiple CDs coming due at multiple different times. This is a great way to do it because of the 6% bonus for any premium in the first five years. So we do see a lot of that. And the last one I mentioned here is Roth conversions. Uh, that's become a lot bigger topic the last couple of years, and we're seeing a lot more people uh, doing Roth conversions. The reason this product works good for that is, you know, I, as you know, one of the, the big issues with doing a Roth conversion is the tax, right? They're going to have to pay the taxes on that conversion. So I see, you know, we see a lot of people maybe wanting to do partial conversions or convert a smaller amount. Well, where this product works good is if your client has some money, let's say, sitting in an IRA somewhere, they could send over, you know, 10% a year or whatever the number is to the market 10 bonus. We will do what I call an in-flight Roth conversion. So we will convert it before we issue it so that premium bonus won't be taxed. 
right? That six percent bonus, and then they have a then they have a Roth, right? And then next year they can send over more money. We'll convert to add it to that. They'll get a six percent bonus for the first five years, which is going to help to offset some of that taxes, and it's going to spread that taxation out. And at the end of five years, they got this one product where they've sent over a you know a good chunk of money to convert to a Roth IRA. So, uh, just an idea of what we see, and I see some people using that strategy. Current rates on this are similar to what you see on the market uh, power bonus. Uh, the bonus is less, but because of the ROP, it does kind of limit where we can go with caps and rates. So you can see them all listed here. I won't go through them all. I'll just highlight the uh, Focus 50 again, uh, which once again is a 3.58 illustrated rate on the one year and a 4.91 on the two year. Okay, uh, I mentioned the two year strategy a couple times. I know that does concern uh, folks sometimes. You know, obviously, if a client is in there, they're not going to see any growth on their statement for two years, which can definitely be a concern during annual reviews. And you may have seen something like this before. We call it the ladder of performance. Uh, really, what it is, is is a way to allow the client to see returns every year and take and still take advantage of the two-year strategies. I call it alternating two years. So you can see in this example, they would put 50% in the one-year strategy. They would put 50% in the two-year strategy. At the end of the first year, they would hopefully see some growth in the one-year strategy during an annual review. And at that point, you would reallocate that 50% to a new two-year strategy. And then going forward, you have what I call, I guess, alternating or offsetting two years. So every year, 50% of their money is getting credited interest, assuming it's going up. It's just a way to address that situation where the client's, you know, only seeing returns every two years on their statement. Okay, those are the two bonus products. Now let me hit quick on the two non-bonus products, which really is the place where we've seen the most uh, business over the last couple of months in the accumulation products. We have two products. The first is the market value index. Very clean, very simple, very easy to understand product. Uh, really all we've done is put everything we can into giving the best rates and caps possible. 10-year product, all built for accumulation. Okay, so let's just go right to the rates and I'll kind of show you where they're at. So you can see here on a point-to-point -point cap, we're at 4.25. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that. We see a lot actually in the point-to-point -point par account, which is 28%. So, I mean, if you think the market's going to really jump next year, like some people do, it may make sense to use a strategy like that, even with a 28% par rate. And then we have the monthly averaging strategies, and we'll get down here to the focus 50 again. Here's where we're going to see a lot higher growth potential. With the one-year point-to-point part, 85%, it actually would illustrate a 6.73 uh, annualized return. With a two-year, it's actually 8.85 annualized return on the illustration. And this is the first product we have the Mark V on. And it's just a one-year point-to-point part, and it illustrates a 6.43. Okay, one thing I want to point out, too, about these strategies, all, all three of these, but especially the Focus 50, is renewal rates. Uh, because we're controlling volatility and because we have fixed option costs, you really should not see changes at renewal uh, with these strategies, right? So you see this 85% of the one year at renewal next year, it really should stay at 85. Uh, we've had a vol control index now for many years, and we've never once had a renewal rate go down on any of our vol control indexes that we've had since inception. And that's because of the fixed option costs and because we're controlling volatility on it. And so some, that's why it's a good way to, even if you're not going to use it initially, it's a great strategy to have, I think, within the product uh, because, you know, maybe the point to point gap goes down next year because of option costs. You can reallocate to one of these strategies, which will most likely still be the same. Okay. And here's a, and, you know, speaking of renewal rates, we are very transparent when it comes to renewal rates at Equicrust. We take a lot of pride uh, in our renewal rate integrity. Uh, we publicize all of our renewal rates on all of our products, including our fixed products, on our website. So you can go to our website, you can put in any issue date, uh, any product, it will show you what it issued at and what it renewed at every year. Okay, so very transparent. We take a lot of pride in the, in, in the uh, renewal rates. And as you know, with, especially with a longer term accumulation product, renewal rates are vital, right? It's really important that they renew well. And the thing about Equitrust is, you know, renewal rates are not perfect. They go up sometimes, they go down sometimes, but we can always explain why. And uh, we can explain to you why, so you can explain to your client why maybe the rates changed at renewal. 
Okay, the last product I will look at is the Market 7. Very much like the market value we just talked about. The big difference is this is a seven-year contract instead of a 10-year uh, contract. Here, uh, it is flexible premium, seven-year design. This is our one product that goes to age 85 too. So we do see a lot of older uh, clients in this product. Once again, it's just built for accumulation. You know, not a whole lot to talk about it. Nothing, no, you know, bells or whistles. It's just trying to give the client the best long-term growth. One thing I will point out that this has on it that's different than our product and a lot of our products out there is it has a guaranteed accumulation value uh, benefit of 107%. What that means is at the end of the seven years, if it hasn't grown by 7%, we will immediately raise their value to that. Okay, so let's say your client puts $100,000 in it, and at the end of seven years, the market just has not performed and their value is at 105000 We will automatically increase their value on that date to 107000 Okay, so basically what it works out to is a 1% simple interest guarantee every year, right? Which, and that's part of the reason I think we see a lot of CD money come into this product, because they can give them that guarantee, but give them a lot more potential above that guarantee. That's the market seven. And here's the current rates and caps on it. Once again, lots of strategies. Uh, you know, we want to give them lots of options here and very strong, very similar to the market value, a little lower rates because it's a seven year product. See 4% point to point cap. We go down here, we got 80%, uh, which is a 633 illustrator rate. 115 here is eight and a half illustrator rate. And then the mark five illustrates a 5.79. All right, so still very strong rates. Uh, they get a little better rates by going 10 years, but still really long rates in seven years. Okay, company strength. Uh, we are a B double plus company, uh, but very strong financially. Uh, if you look at our financials, you see we're 20, uh, over 20 billion in assets. Our portfolio is 92% investment grade. RBC, which is a really important calculation, as you may know, we're well, well, well over what's required at 367%, a solvency of over 106. So the financials are all there. Uh, we're very strong. If you need some more information on financials and things like that, it's on our website. You can contact Nick or Andy or myself, and we can get you some more information too. So just kind of closing to summarize a little bit, uh, you know, Equitrust was kind of built on keeping our products very clean and very simple. Uh, you know, we're not a very large company. Our products don't change a whole lot. We try to make them as simple and easy to understand and as competitive as we can. Return of premium products available in most states, kind of a unique product in our industry and, uh, you know, as a way to address that uh, surrender charge objection a client may have. Talked about the 10% bonus product. It is a true cash bonus. They get it immediately. They get it up front. It's available in all but three states. Uh, the accumulation focused products, like I said, that's where we've really seen the business recently coming in. Uh, the two new indices have really helped that with the Barclays and the Mark V. Uh, and, you know, just great options for clean, simple, long term accumulation. And along with the accumulation, is it's important to have renewal rate. You know, strong renewal rate history, which Equitrust does, and we do publish it everywhere. Now, I didn't have time to get into this today, but we also uh, have fixed products, and we have a very competitive SPIA. So if you ever use a SPIA, especially a period certain SPIA, we're really strong in that area, uh, the 5 to 20 year period certain SPIAs. With that, that's all I have today. I appreciate your time. I'll pass it back to maybe Andy, and I don't know if anybody has any questions, or you have anything you want to add, Andy? Uh, no, thanks, Jason. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, Western Marketing's partnered with Equitrust for a long time. Uh, they've got a great annuity portfolio uh, website, easy to explain products to your clients. That is a key feature, I think. Um, but uh, if you got any questions or anything, you can always reach out to, <clears throat> excuse me, Western Marketing at 800-852-7152. And uh, appreciate everybody's time today. And thank you again, Jason, and everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.